You're listening to the Veterans Impact Show, continuing the mission of service and bringing together our civilian and military communities. Brought to you by Fairway Independent Mortgage and Lone Star Wealth Strategies. Don't worry. Retire happy and work with us. Hey, this is Jim Blythe and Chuck Wright, and we're here for you. This is a great opportunity, and we've got some great friends going to be on board with us today. I wanted to throw this to Chuck real quick because we were talking about Charlie Mike, continue the mission, and what you're working with, the Reeds Across America. Yeah, absolutely. This has been a passion project of mine for quite a while. Uh, it's kind of the uh, we call veteran season September 11th to November 11th, but we really extend it. We have the um, Fellowship Power Lunch, uh, Veterans Appreciation Lunch, uh, the Tuesday after Veterans Day. And then our last event will be, and you're seeing, for those of on Facebook, we'll see the DFW wreaths, two W's in there, dot com uh, online page, uh, what do you call it, website page, that's the term where you can go to sponsor a wreath. Ignore, it says the 19th. We we had a typo in there and I haven't been able to get it fixed yet because I don't know how to do that. Uh, it's the 17th of December. <laughs> and we're, we're still looking for people to sponsor a wreath. It's only $15 to sponsor a, a wreath to honor a veteran. And the motto of Wreaths Across America is remember the veterans, honor their service and teach our younger generation. We are also asking people, and, and, and Richard and I, our guests, are going to talk a little bit about some of the things that when we get to the ASU, ASUA. Yeah, the, uh, the, the Army guys. I know, don't expect me to know what the Army guys <laughs> hey, you're are. A you're a Marine. I'm a Marine. Yeah. <laughs> if you didn't send it over in crayon font, I can't read it. <laughs> so anyway, we're, you know, we're inviting everybody not only to sponsor a wreath, and like I said, they're only $15, um, but a gesture that you can make to honor the service of a veteran, to remember them, who they are but to help to teach, but we're inviting you to come out and actually place that wreath, say that name aloud, read that gravestone. Um, we have one that in, a, in the section that I always work, um, we have Corporal Goldman. Uh, uh, and Corporal Goldman was a Marine, and, and he lasted a long time. He's a World War II vet. He was only recently interned, but he's now the guy that we honor in our section, and so we take part in this too, but come on, bring your kids, bring your grandkids. Um, I'm not sure re, um, Richard's going to want to bring the two-year-old. That might be a little young, but at four oh, no. and five, they start to understand what's going on, and we want to teach the next generation about respecting our veterans. So, commercial out of the way, DFWreaths.com. Um, $15 wreaths. There's a sponsor button that says sponsor a wreath here. Uh, we'll take you right to the Breeze Across America site that is, is tied to the DFW National Cemetery, December 17th. And do you want to uh, introduce our guest, our yeah, good friend? Yeah, okay. Uh, a a long-time friend. And here's another man who, Charlie Mike, continues the mission. His Absolutely. work <laughs> after being in the Army and retiring as a colonel has been amazing with AUSA. He heads up the golf tournament every year. You might want to he, tell our listeners what AUSA means. The Association of the United States Army. There we go. How about that? How about that? Because I'm a member of that as well as Navy League. But one of the things, Richard called me up some time ago. A couple of, I guess it was about a did year he, and a half ago. Did he ago, call you names? And he said, oh, hey. Call them names. <laughs> yeah. We got a new deal called Our Community Salutes. Oh, yes. I love that this That resonates with me because I like working with young men and women, and this honors young men and women going into the military. Richard, you headed up for our DFW area for Fort Worth and Dallas. Tell us a little bit about that and what we're doing there to honor those young men and women and how it affects uh, them and affects our community. So the Our Community Salutes uh, DFW uh, chapter uh, does recognition ceremonies for the high school graduating seniors who are gonna enlist in the armed forces, all the branches. Uh, and fortunately for us, or unfortunately for us, depending on how you look at it, the Dallas-Fort Worth 
uh, chapter happens to be the largest geographic chapter for our community salutes nationwide. Our, re our eight recruiting commands, Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, Coast Guard, Texas Guard, Texas, you know, Air Guard, and now Space Command, all of the battalions and recruiting commands in this area are the largest for their services in the nation. And they go from like Louisiana, Arkansas to Midland, Odessa, down almost Fort Hood and up to uh, the Oklahoma borders. So it's big, but we can really only afford to, to manage the Dallas-Fort Worth area. On a normal recruiting command, doesn't care what branch it is, they'll sign up 100 young men or women to, that are contractually signed in, ready to what we call get on the bus. They're going to go in and go to their basic course and be it, start their career. Um, on average, 10 to 20% of them who have signed up don't get on the bus for whatever reason. Uh, but when they come to our recognition ceremonies for the first time ever, they hear somebody other than their recruiter saying it's a good idea. This is a, not a you know a decision of last resort. This is a primary decision on your next career path so richard let me let me interrupt you for just a second yep i want to set the stage for those who aren't familiar with this um with your program talk a little bit about how you get all the recruits together um where where in dfw it is where in fort worth it is so they get a better visual of what's happening right so we you know so the uh so well let's talk about the 2023 time period so we are looking at uh, the 29th of April, uh, tentatively, uh, we will have a Dallas event. It'll be an evening event. Uh, it'll be, you know, the, the enlistees, the poolies, the recruiters, the VIPs, the parents uh, coming in. Uh, this year, for the first time, we're actually planning to feed them. Because if you feed them, more show up. I uh, like that. <laughs> <laughs> now I'll show up. <laughs> yeah. So the... Uh, uh, you know, we we think we have locked in uh, Parker University at Walnut Hill in 75 for the oh, Dallas wow. event on the 29th. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we are still working with a couple of venues in Fort Worth, and that could occur either the 6th, 13th, or 20th of May, depending on, you know, the venue requirements, because the requirements we're asking for now is the ability to, to feed people. And that, that seems to be hard for the venues uh, within the Fort Worth side of it. But we will, we are fine. We have a tentative one. We're looking at a couple more just to lock in the best location. But, um, you know, we're looking, you know, we expect to have 200 plus enlistees, poolies per event, and then another four, 500 family members. So it's a six, 700 person event. So um, this event, you're gathering all these people together in one location. And I, and I want to go back to, because I was thinking about it, and I remember we all got together when we were going to OC, Officer Candidate School, and right. we got together in Austin. They put us up in a, in a motel for this exact reason, to make sure we got on the, it was an airplane, not a bus. Yeah, but right. The, uh, yeah. the strains of uh, Simon and Garfunkel's, get on the bus, <laughs> Gus, is running through my mind. Right. Um, but getting everybody together to go out. But the other thing that you're doing, and I want to set the stage, you know, why is this so difficult? So many of us that are listening have already been through this, but you think about a 17, 18, 19-year-old young man or young woman who likely has never been away from home is going off to something that is super scary. It is much larger than they are. And it's it, it it's almost terrifying, and this event brings them all together and, and gets them motivated. And I'm, I'm going to throw in this side story. Jim and Diane and my wife and I had the honor of being at Skyball this year where they had a, I don't know how many, 20, 30, 40 uh, young people yeah. took their oath of enlistment together. And it's so cool because yep. They, all, they are all referred to as poolies, regardless of service, but all the services had their own T-shirts. Yeah. And, of course, not surprisingly, the best-looking T-shirt was the Marine Corps T-shirt. Uh, okay, I'm a little biased. What can I say? 
Our uniforms look better. Our T-shirts look better. Our candidates just look better. Come on. No, I'm just kidding. Kidding about that. But, and here we go. Uh, for those on Facebook, you can see the Our Community Salutes uh, webpage. But it is such a, it is that first step towards joining this larger body that so many of us came to know and love. So, sorry, I wanted to in interject that so that our, especially our radio listeners, but all of our listeners had a better visual of what you were trying to accomplish. But I also want to, let's continue to drill deeper into the, you get 100 sign up and inevitably 8 to 20 don't show. Let's take the story, take the story from there. So what what has been, you know, of course, COVID has not helped us. You know, yeah. the, the, it disconnected the recruiting commands from physically meeting the person and getting that personal bond with them that, you know, to talk to them about, you know, their career in the pick a service, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Army, doesn't care, Texas National Guard. Uh, and that has caused, you know, that's that's been a challenge in its own right. Uh, coupled with the fact that the, the population in the United States, you know, less than 20% of the high school graduates can even join the military, uh, mainly because kids are overweight, can't meet the uh, physical requirements, uh, yeah, the variety of different issues in regards to taking, uh, uh, you know, Ritalin type drugs uh, to calm them down, things like that. There's a variety of reasons that you know the vast majority of the population can't even join. So the the pool of people to to select from is narrow. And then there's other options. You know the economy is doing well. Uh, people, are, you know, they can get a job, stay at home, stay at the house. You know all those things. And then the, the vast majority of the population has no reference to the military at all. You know, we, we all had probably relatives or so fathers or talk mothers. About, you know. Talk about that for just a second, because I think that's right. incredibly important. And it's a sub subplot to this, what you're trying to accomplish. Talk about how the, you've got the numbers, the percents of the population. Go, oh, you know where I'm going. So right. salv salvage my terrible intro <laughs> into that. So, you know, as, as the military has shrunk and the, you know, the ability to have a relative that has okay. served has gone down, uh, the ability for that young 17, 18, 19, 20 year old to have someone in their immediate family or their grandparents to who serve is dwindling. Yep. So they don't have a reference base. Everybody's sitting around, you know, Dallas Fort Worth, perfect example. We're the largest recruiting area in the U.S., period, uh, for any service. But the vast majority of people see no reference to the right. military. Unless you happen to be driving by the Joint Reserve Base Fort Worth, many there ain't people nothing around even, here. Many yeah, people don't no, even know. It's we not got Fort one. Hood. It's not. Yeah. No. Fort Sill, it's a not, I mean, it's not a, we're not a military town. No, we're not San Antonio. And we're not San, you know, yeah, military USA. So, so they have no reference. They don't see what they're doing. They have no idea what, you know, they, all they think when I meet a young person, all they think is you're going to become a 11 Bravo infantry person shooting machine guns at the bad guys. And when I kind of, kindly, gently tell them, well, there's about 140 job types within the military. You want to be a nurse? Guess who can train you for free? You, you want to be an engineer? Have at it. I think it's so important to talk about that, but Rich, one of the other things is it's not popular with a lot of kids. So one of the things we do with our community salute is to give these kids recognition, honor yeah. them, give them certificates make them feel good about what they're doing right and that's incredibly important because i think without a doubt peer pressure there's a lot of kids in the high school going you're going to go do what and right. i think that this is an amazing thing because it helps these young men and women get a start in life that is truly amazing education leadership all of these things. So I'll tell you what, when we come back, we're going to talk more about our community salutes and getting involved. Charlie Mike, 
This is the Veterans Impact Show. Hey, Facebook, we're still here. We take our breaks for the radio, uh, but we're still here with you. Um, do us a favor. Uh, if you're, you're watching, like our Facebook channel. Uh, you can follow us and watch us after the fact on both Facebook, but on our YouTube channel. We're asking you to subscribe. doesn't give us your email information. We're not going to spam you with it, Just, but hit subscribe and uh, show us some love. Just show us a little love. And, hey, if you're listening, make a comment in the chat box. i got Diane over here dying to respond to somebody. <laughs> Tell her she's looking great today. She just had a birthday, so a little birthday shout-out for her. Um, and I'm talking about Diane, and she is one of our two producers, uh, the lovely Mrs. Blythe. But I want to give a shout-out to uh, Nathaniel Smith. Uh, Ascend Podcasts is the pro formal producer of the show, does an outstanding job. We need to give him some love. And his business is ex expanding <coughs> and becoming a more multimedia organization. So if you're looking for that kind of support, uh, he has done an outstanding job for us. Really? So that's it, my it, commercial. There it enabled us to change and become more of a media broadcast than just a radio broadcast. Yeah, so absolutely. We're carried in California, and I want to say thank you so much to the AUN Network. We're carried in South Texas with the No Whip Bull Network. That's I the No you, Bull Network. And I, I got to tell you, the share because this information about what our community salutes does and what it does to be involved this is important stuff this is great stuff and one of the things that uh, that's a great segue into richard uh or asking richard setting up the next question and let's just talk about texas for now but au um excuse right. me community salutes is a national program let's talk about our texas chapters and then talk about where we are nationally so we're fortunate that we've got seven chapters in the area. We've got the Dallas-Fort Worth one in the, in the state of Texas. I'd say. You've got Houston, you know, it's, you hate to say the obvious one, Houston, Austin, San Antonio, El Paso. Uh, outside of Fort Hood has one, the yep. clean area. Down in Brownsville, we have one down there. But, you know, when you sit there and say, hey, yeah, we've got seven chapters, the state of Texas, we should have 70 chapters. Um you know, if you're in a, you know, we're working with a couple of other locations to be able to to have a, a, a sub-chapter for a, our Dallas-Fort Worth one um, because we're already set up as a corporation, all the, the legal stuff. And then if somebody like, you know, someone in uh, middle of Odessa or Tyler or Waco or Texarkana wants to set up something, we will help fund them, help to get them going. And it's it's just a smaller, but it still is a need. Out so there. I, I to met a guy from Tyler last night. You met a guy from Tyler last night. I'm shocked. It, shocked. It's a deal, <laughs> and they're getting some things off the ground. And I yeah. think they would love to be involved in something like this. So but, we we we're talking to Tyler, Texas. Excellent. So that excellent could stuff. occur in 2023. So, to be clear for our listeners, if you think this is a great idea. Uh, 30 seconds or a minute? He's giving me the wrong hand signals. I, I'm so confused. Um, but we want you to know there are opportunities to grow, and we're coming back here. In just Absolutely. All right. And Facebook, stay with us. Again, as Chuck said, share us, subscribe, be a part of this. Yep. Join the mission, because the mission is to continue. Welcome back to the Veterans Impact Show, and thanks to our sponsors, Fairway Independent Mortgage and Lone Star Wealth Strategies. Now, let's continue this great conversation. This is the epitome of Charlie Mike, continuing the mission, talking with Richard Canis about our community salutes, wreaths across America. Get involved. Be involved. If you're a veteran, be involved in your community. Look it up. Our community salutes is across the nation. And Richard was just telling us there's seven chapters in Texas. We need more. And the reason across America is that every national cemetery yep. and some state cemeteries as well. The and in international cemeteries. We're yep. going to Guam. Right. We're down in Australia. So uh, it's we're doing it in Europe this year. It's important 
to get involved, be involved, and be a part of this community, especially whether you're a veteran or a civilian. Now, let's go so, back. Let, yeah, well, let me jump in real quick before we jump back to Richard. I want to say something. It's always There's always a little bit of trepidation when somebody thinks about getting involved with things. We have just described two things that I would call extremely easy lifts. Um, the organizations have already been created. The hard work has already been done. With Wreaths Across America, we're asking you to come out, you know, sponsor a wreath, hit the website, sponsor a wreath, but you don't have to. You know, I want to make it clear that it, we're not requiring you to sponsor a wreath, but just come out and show up. Spend a couple hours on a Saturday and honor a veteran with community salutes. Let's go to the other end of the, um, of the spectrum, and let's honor those young men and women that are raising their right hand and saying, you know what? I will do this. I will defend our nation, and let's honor them. And, and one thing that I wanted to say in a perfect place to put it, I was so proud. My son graduated in May from high school with honors, by the way, proud dad moment for me. Um, <laughs> and we didn't know it was coming. We, he had no idea that he had actually uh, qualified to be an honor student. Uh, he was one of those kids. He didn't start out bad, but he started out kind of not honor student and climbed up to it. I just wasn't aware that he'd made it. Um, but I was so pleased when they took a moment and they said, would all of the young men and women going into service for our nation please stand? Wow. And it was such a powerful moment for me because, quite frankly, I'm not going to discuss the school district we were in, uh, but it has taken a turn to the woke, and it's time to turn away from that. <laughs> And honor these people and honor our first responders. Uh, but back to Richard Canis, uh, community Canis, I always say it wrong. Yeah, like you've never yeah, had that mispronounced good. before. <laughs> yeah, yeah on, on, the, on the field in Tennessee last week. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. And we're going to segue into that story after you wrap this part up because I want to get that story out. It's college yeah. football. Saturday, and it's a sad day for me. We are down to two games left in the season, <laughs> the regular season. Two games. Always a sad time of the year. But let's, let's continue. Yeah, let's come back. Richard, we have two events. We have one in Fort Worth, one in Dallas. And if you're in San Antonio, right. if you're in uh, Brownsville, yeah. if you're in El Paso, look up our community right. salutes in your area. Hmm? That's That's right. Right. Go, go to the ourcommunitysalutes.org at the national level. Go to Texas, click down onto your city, and then you will see the points of contact and their link to their events. Now, a quick question. Just made me think about that when you talked about the Rio Grande Valley. If you have a son or daughter going into the military, how do they basically get invited to this? So through the recruiting commands. Okay. They're the guys pushing the rock for us. So their recruiting commands, uh, they – once again, the Department of Defense has seen the power of what a, our community salutes can do to a recruiting command's mission by completing their mission. Um, they're, they're actively asking the national level to, to go into several cities in the nation that are, that are struggling with the recruiting command. But anybody, once again, you're recruiting, you know, recruiters, uh, we'll have the information we're doing. We do monthly meetings with them right now, Zoom meetings. Um, they've solidified the dates. Uh, the, like I said, 29 April, that's Dallas. That's going to be our Dallas event. May, the first Saturday, first three Saturdays of May are our target dates. We haven't locked down that venue, but we're going to be doing them. So that's that's what's going to occur. And Richard, Cedar 10. Uh, we've talked about what it does for the recruiting command. What's it doing for that young man or woman? I think oh, that's one exactly. of the things we need to focus on because by honoring them, you're making them feel great about the decision right. that they're making. And for you and me and Chuck, I got to tell you, going to boot camp, being part of the Navy, being part of the Marine Corps, being part of the Army, guys, it made the difference in our life. It changed us for the better. Yeah, I even, yeah. I even passed Advanced Crayons 101. 
It was awesome. See? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. We're so we're gonna, proud. We're going to have to take a break to hear from our sponsors. And yeah, I'm so cute. thrilled to the Fairway and Chuck sponsor this. This is Jim Blythe and Chuck Wright. This is the Veterans Impact Show. We're here for you. Continuing the mission. <laughs> You know, the one thing that as as I meet these young men and women who are going in, you know, and you find out how many of them are first generation yeah. going into the service. Yeah. yeah. That's just fabulous. And they, it is amazing how many stories. our first generation wants oh, to find a way to serve. They, um, they, you know, and, yeah. Kids and, who have options to do other things, yep. college and scholarship, going in. Yep. God bless them, man. But I think... What happened to me and happened to so many others was it changed our lives. It made us into young men, and I'm saying I know the yep. same is true for young women, but it changed us into being adults and going through that experience, yeah. which is only yep. what is it nine to thirteen weeks or something like that to go through. I don't know. Camp. Army, Army not like going that. down to nine weeks because they're you know, and, yeah. and I've heard they're adding room service to the. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, but it, the Marines are staying at 13 weeks. Thank you very much. When I came back to college after the Navy, I was a straight A student, and I had job opportunities offered to yeah. me because I was, you know, now an adult and a business person. So, and, and the one thing, and I'm going to throw this in, but I've got a question for Richard, or kind of want a continuation of something we were talking about, but I want to get back to incredibly important: the word. Is discipline. You learn yep. a discipline that, frankly, cannot, is not being taught at the high school level. And it's not discipline like we think of it as abuse or spankings or anything. Like that. I'm talking about personal discipline for you yep. to have. And here's the other piece. You've had some responsibility. You've gotten a taste that you will never get. I say never. But it's going to be... Um, um, what am I trying to say? Uh, it, you're never going to get it in the civilian community, pretty much. And, and generalizing, I'm sure you can find any example of it. But I'm talking about, I've got a friend of mine's son who went into the Army, and he is now commanding a Bradley tank. This is a $3, 4000000 million dollar vehicle. He's in charge of other people. He's about right. to make staff sergeant. Right. He's going to be in charge of three right. or four tanks. Right. I don't remember how the... I don't know how the armor works on that side, but the point being, he's had some responsibility. Yeah. And we we talked about this when we originally started the show years and years ago. Uh, we were really focused on the advantages that a veteran brings, that's transitioning, that brings to a company. And one of the things we always talked about is, is who cares if that person has a skill set to walk on the floor of your plant today and do a certain job? That person... Right has teachable skills, but the beauty yeah. of it is you tell him what the mission is or her what the mission is, right. they're not going to come to you and say, well, how do I do this? They're going to solve the problem. And and this is the part that if I'm talking to a young person, I want to get them excited about. This is an opportunity for you to do something beyond that. So let's come back to one of the reasons you started this when we talked about this. I wanted to finish the numbers. You talked about 8 to 12%. Whatever the percentage was, we were losing a lot of people. What is the percentage of people who get on the bus after attending a community sleuths event? So, and an event. You know, we see that 10 to 20 percent that don't get on the bus. We see that number drop to about one to two percent. You know, oh, there's wow. still people that won't do it, but it drops, it plummets. All right, we're going to be coming back on for our radio audience. Welcome back aboard. Stay with us. Yep. Facebook. There we go. Welcome back. This is the Veterans Impact Show. And thanks to our great sponsors, Fairway Independent Mortgage and Lone Star Well Strategies. Now, let's continue this conversation. Man, what a great day we got. I got Chuck Wright, a Marine. You know, you told many stories about how motion sickness, and yet you flew a helicopter. That must have been thrilling for the crew. And then, I know. you know, the funny thing was, I, we we start unlike the army, um, all naval aviators, uh, marine, coast guard, and uh, uh, navy. You know, all the uh, 
Maverick Top Gun guys all start out playing fixed wing, and I've got about 150 hours of fixed wing time. I couldn't, oh, I finally did get past it. I never once came close to getting airsick in helicopter. God, I love helicopters. <laughs> you got to love something that aerodynamically cannot fly. And, but, Richard, you commanded uh, Tank Corps, didn't you? Weren't you involved in... No, 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 no. That's JP. Yeah. Uh, that's JP I'm and John Antler. transport guy. Oh, Trans transport. Stuff. Logistics. I set up log bases. So, okay. <laughs> so I lost track of where we were. Richard, would you repeat, and it's part of the mission of, of community service. So, so the, you know, so the recruiters... We'll see normally a 10 to 20 percent drop off of those who will get on the bus. Who will not from get on the bus? Yeah, they won't get on the yeah. bus for a variety of reasons. But those who have attended uh, at our level and at the national level, uh, our community salute, thank you recognition ceremony. They see that number drop to one to two percent. They'll still lose one or two. Yeah. Uh, normally, that's occurred because of a, of a family issue, not the person themselves. Uh, but uh, for the recruiting commands, it helps them close the mission, get it done, and get the hundred that they've struggled to find on the bus. And that's uh, that's the hallelujah moment yeah. with the recruiting commands and for that young enlistee Pooley, uh is, hey, it's a right well, decision. And, and it's not just, and it just dawned on me, and I don't know why it took me so long to figure this out, probably because I'm a Marine. Um, so you hit and written it out in Korean, but I just thought about this, the trepidation, and I'm sitting here thinking, oh, duh, I've got a 19-year-old, um, the trepidation of the parents, and it just dawned on me, this has got to really reassure them. Absolutely. They are Absolutely. making Absolutely. Richard, could you tell any stories about maybe some of the families that you've talked to after the ceremony or the kids you've talked to after the ceremony? Because you mentioned the you recruiters know, we, yeah. love it. We, we, we know, you know, we, we do a couple of things. We, all, you know, we also issue an award out for that high school graduate, uh, for that teacher or that counselor that helps the recruiting commands. We give out a Colin Powell Award for those per city. And uh, but one of the things that we we always do is we reach out to the recruiting commands to find that one young man or woman that we can interview, so we can post it on our website or whatever. And uh, this last year in May, we had a young gentleman in our Dallas uh, ceremony could have gone anywhere college wise, family, military background, but he decided this is my time to serve. So. Did not go college, did return down scholarships to enlist to go into the army. Yay! <laughs> the army beat Navy. So, uh, but, uh, uh, you, so when, you know, I think that your feed just got cut off. No. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> go Navy, beat but, Army. But it was it was a fabulous ceremony. I had him actually. I recognized him. Oh, had him man, stand that's such up. A great story. You know, it, you know, he didn't like that. But I told him, "Hey, Colonel, tells you to stand up. Stand up. You learn yes, rule number one." But um, you know, just a fabulous time. And, and um, you know, here's this young eighteen year old who understands it's time to serve. Oh, I love and, it. And it's time to serve. Someone's got to serve so that you can sit around and go to Walmart and, you know, be with your friends and not worry about sitting in, like, Ukraine and you're minding your own business and artillery shell comes in on you. Somebody's got to serve yep. so that that doesn't happen to us. Okay. Now, before our audience panics, I want to let you know, to my knowledge, there is absolutely no movement to send U.S. <laughs> troops into the Ukraine. <laughs> That's right. There's <laughs> absolutely none. Yeah. We are not invading Ukraine. Well, We're uh, all our let's, equipment. <laughs> let's talk about another aspect. And you mentioned this earlier, Richard. There are a hundred and some odd jobs within the Army. And the Navy has so many, so much absolutely. education and training. And the Marine Corps, too, actually, it does issue ballpoint pins to some of the people. For their <laughs> education, gotta pass a special test for that. <laughs> yeah. But I, I got to tell you, what you get out. Now we're talking about yes, service and and what that makes you feel like. But the education, the things that I learned that I did in the yeah. Navy, I use in business today. Yeah. 
And I think it's important to know and understand this is service, yes, without a doubt. But you get served as well because you get to advance, you get to be in leadership, yep. you get to learn. And right. when you come out, you got job skills, you got you got life skills that yeah, other people absolutely. don't have. Hey, I'll, let me throw out another one word descriptor. These young men and women develop a sense of purpose. Yeah. And if there is one thing that I think is missing, yeah. and I think the two words, discipline and purpose, probably the two most important things that come out of our service, which also happens to be the two things missing the most in our society today, part of the frustration, part of the angst. And it's not all the stuff we're hearing about. That's just noise. We right. have people in America who don't have a sense of purpose and don't have the discipline to go find that purpose and I think it's creating a massive amount of frustration. Without a doubt. And, and Richard, what you're doing for these young men and women is more than just oh, recruiting. You're giving them right. a chance in life. Yep. Well, and the other thing that within the Our Community Salutes events, you know, uh, although we're there for that young enlistee Pooley, uh, but it, we're also there to help support that family Yep. who's allowing their young man, son or daughter, you know, to go off and serve. Uh, the ability to, to connect to, you know, we tell them, hey, look, if that, you know, young person's going in the Navy, uh, sitting outside the front door, or I mean, you know, inside the lobby is the Navy League. Go, so if you've got questions about how the Navy works or what needs to be done, there are all the different organizations, the Air Force Association, the Navy League, Army Association, Marine Corps, all of them, they're all here in addition to four or five or six or seven other you know military focused charities get involved become part of the team because your young son or daughter is now on the team and it's about teamwork and the parents are part of that team and, and the mom family says, members let's do it he's doing it the family members they this the dot the other siblings, the brothers right. and sisters, yeah. are looking at this going, that's wow. And now Diane yeah. and I are instructors with Sea Cadets, which is part of the Navy. It, they actually go to the Joint Reserve Base, and they drill with the reservists. This is a national deal. It's not Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts. It is part of the Navy, and it's amazing. And these kids go through that. So we're there to talk about that at the events as well to the families and say, by the way, do you know that your son or daughter could also participate in Sea Cadets and get an incredible amount of education and head start? Because if they choose to go in the military, they go in as an E3, not as an E1. I didn't realize that. That's yes. kind of nice. Yes. Yeah, it's always good to get uh, uh, promotions. I had that advantage through my officer candidate program, uh, my roommate, uh, we're going to talk about him next year when we get in to carry the load, uh, but my roommate had been to the Naval Academy, and it was funny, I was I was at OCS about two, three months, and I got a very nice pay raise, because my it's called pay entry base date, which all military people are acutely <laughs> aware of, I hit three years. Yeah. He started it. He started at zero after four years of the Naval Academy. Right, right, right. Uh, but speaking of go Navy, <laughs> beat Army, um, and college football. It's college football Saturday. We were talking about it a little earlier, and there's a reason for this. I don't want to leave this up. I want Richard Connors. See, I said it right that time. To talk a little bit about an honor that he received, uh, and I uh, I apologize. We don't have the soundtrack to lead into this of um, Hillbilly Rocky, Rocky Mountain, Mountain Blues. What, whatever that song is, you guys play like Talk about this. This is really cool. So I was fortunate that uh, last Friday, Veterans Day itself, uh, the University of Tennessee had decided that uh, myself and seven other young gentlemen um, became uh, inducted in the University of Tennessee uh, Army ROTC Hall of Fame. Wow. So, uh, fabulous ceremony Friday night. Uh, I got to ask, did you get a Hall of Fame ring? 
Yeah, no, I, I, I'm going to go buy one for myself. You know, that's how I'm going to roll. So, but it was uh, uh, like big, huge honor. I, I'm not a big, you know, that that's usually not my style. But when I, they told me they're inducting me, and that actually caught me by surprise, and I'm quite honored to be part of this select group. And, um, and and what a and, year to do it. Tennessee hasn't had uh, a year absolutely. like this since 98, Fabulous. 99. So, you know, there was eight of us uh, inducted. Uh, two were not able to attend. Uh, one was a Vietnam era uh, a Cobra pilot uh, that. Uh, Snake Travis. Treating, getting treated for some cancer. Uh, but they're, they're in the process of trying to see if his uh, Silver Star Award uh, can get upgraded to a Medal of Honor. They found more facts. And they found some more live witnesses to his event. Uh, but, you know, fabulous event Friday night and then on Saturday uh, morning uh, at the University of Tennessee versus Missouri football game. Uh, the six inductees that were there uh, were announced on the field during first quarter. That fun, 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 fun. And, of course, uh, fortunately, we won, won that day. It was a go. Pretty good shellacking of Missouri, but you know it was just a fun sure, day. Love that salt in the wind there, just Great a little time. bit. Gotta love it. Gotta love love college it. football. So, and, and did I mention go Navy beat Army? Oh, sorry. Yeah, Rich, no, no, you can mention it all uh, you want. Yeah, you know, we'll Rich, see what happens in two weeks. I know? think a lot of people though also should know that the University of Tennessee has worked with the Navy because Millington, Tennessee was a major naval training yeah. base mm -hmm. and the University of Tennessee helped the Navy develop leadership training programs and programs to teach instructors how to instruct. Yeah. And they yeah. wrote a lot of the manuals that the Navy uses. Mm -hmm. So the Navy didn't do this by themselves and there's a special honor that I would say for the University of Tennessee for what it did for the Navy. We're, we're fortunate that at Tennessee, the, uh, uh, the Rocky Top Battalion for the ROTC department is one of the largest ones in the, in the nation. Uh, we're ninth, uh, and then that's counting the four service. <laughs> it's cool, so we try not to count those, but uh, uh, it's a very successful program. Uh, lots of, like I said, you know, they, they have 100 and I think they said 180 kids in in army rotc uh, wow and um very successful uh, in fact and unfortunately for us tennessee is a you know volunteer state so it, they're very pro-military pro you know so uh i met the chancellor you know they're going to add to their uh rotc department uh staffing they're adding oh, to their building and they're at i mean it's it was a great introduction to what's changed since you know, I came in and, you know, graduated in 76. Uh, things but, are different. <laughs> Richard, one of the things people need to know, these ROTC programs in the colleges, I know TCU's got one, SMU's right. got one, University of Texas has got it, obviously A&M a and OU. Yeah. And yep. here's the thing. You go in and you're part of that program. It's it's a scholarship. You Your education is paid for by the military yep. and you give what is it four years or six years it's and you get you start two, off two as an years officer for every year you get right. um they've got a way of figuring <sighs> that out um but it's amazing yeah. and i didn't know about that and i think for me personally right. i'm third generation navy if i'd have known about it i would have gone to the navy rotc program down at the university of texas because that's where i graduated yeah. ultimately and here's a piece of data that most people don't know is there are uh, scholarships that aren't issued because they don't have enough people who want them. Wow. So, you know, if you're, if you're looking to go into college, you know, and you know, it's, you want so, to become an officer, me, regardless of branch, there's scholarship. Well, we got, we got another break coming up, but is there a way to reverse figure out who's got open scholarships? and try to plug people in that way? The, we, well, we can talk about now or, you know, there's, you know, depending on your school, you know, that, like I said, if you go to, if you're going to a school, first thing you do is go on their website and see if they have an ROTC program, regardless of the branch, you know. And, and so. those programs are amazing. One of the things I also didn't know 
is the Merchant Marine Academy in Indianapolis is a three-year program, and part yeah. of it is not only seamanship, but logistics. One of the biggest, I think, industries today has to do with logistics and moving things around. Yeah. Can you imagine doing that? And then you can go to any military. You go to the Merchant Marine Academy, you can go to any military. So let's stay with the military. We're going to be right yeah. back after these words. Thank you for staying with us. And again, subscribe to us on YouTube. Enjoy it out in California. We love Northern California. We think it's beautiful. We love South Texas. How great. I've got family down there. And then, Chuck, you grew up in San Antonio. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, for our friends on the No Bull Network, uh, my friends down around Dilly and Pearsall, uh, shout out to the Urban family. Um, Milton Urban was a Iwo Jima veteran in the Marine Corps. Uh, that was Uncle Milton. Um, and uh, his grandsons, uh, one was another Marine who I think recently retired. I got to get a hold of Jake and find out. He was getting out, had one foot out the door, and but he hadn't gotten out the last time I talked to him. And his son was an Apache pilot in the Army. He was kind of the black sheep of the family. Uh, <laughs> We're doing inner service jokes here, and that one went right over Richard's head, but that's okay. Because <laughs> he normally responds to those. But, yeah, absolute shout-out to the Urbans. Um, years and years of living down near Dilly and Pearsall, and we were peanut farmers and watermelon farmers. Or I say we. I use the royal we. Uh, we would go down and hang out. and uh, uh, So I got to tell this real quick hunting story because I'd never been hunting, and the dogs had treated a raccoon when we were out one night. <laughs> And I made the mistake of asking Cousin Roy, I said, Roy, how heavy is that raccoon? And he goes, here, you can find out. I wound up having to carry that darn thing all the way back to camp. Well, good, good, thing, it, good thing it wasn't a javelina or a, a deer. Yeah. Well, actually, that's when we were out uh, hunting javelinas. <clears throat> out hunting javelinas with my little 22. Boy, I wish. Wrong. I'm glad I didn't Wrong. know Wrong. then what I know now because yeah, that was oh, like man. all I was going to do is make that javelina mad. <laughs> <laughs> they they can be dangerous. Oh, but where where did you grow up, Richard? St. Petersburg, Florida. Ah, oh, one of my favorite cities. I took Diane yeah. there this summer. I got to tell you, man, we went to uh, a great restaurant that's uh, on a, kind of on a peninsula that looks out over the Gulf of Mexico and watch the ships come in. Yep. Well, there's lots of them. So, yeah. that, that, so you how'd know. you wind up at the University of Tennessee? Track and field. I was a distance runner for him in '72. Oh, very cool! I and, knew you were fast. Three guy. weeks on the. I lasted three weeks on the team. <laughs> well, you they lasted longer the school than I lasted at Texas Lutheran <laughs> trying to play football. That lasted about 15 minutes. Coach Wacker walked over, put his hand on my shoulder pad, and said, "Son, I love your enthusiasm, but I'm Go seriously home. worried you're going to get hurt." <laughs> I said, thanks, Coach. <laughs> I was gone. <laughs> they, uh, it, the, the coach at the time, Stan Huntsman, God bless him, was the U.S. Olympic coach and the NCAA track champion coach at Tennessee. We were a powerhouse. Wow. And um, I had gone to college to get an education, made a mistake of thinking that he was backing me on that. And I had a chem lab in the middle of the afternoon. And I came to the coach and said, hey, I got a problem. What is it? I got this lab. Oh, that's easy. That's easy to fix. What's that? Don't go to it. I said, I need it for class. He said, and I'll remember that I didn't bring you here to go to school. You're here to run track. <laughs> and at 18 years, I thought, I wasn't expecting that answer from my coach. Uh, all right, guys, we'll be back on the air in 15 minutes. <laughs> this is going to be our wrap-up. <laughs> One of the questions I always ask is, you know, what would you say to a young man or woman who's considering the military? And I think both for college and high school. Our community salutes. Let's go. You Welcome know, back. This is the Veterans Impact yeah. Show. Hey, and thanks to our great sponsors, Fairway Independent Mortgage and Lone Star Wealth Strategies. Now, let's continue this conversation. Well, I'm about to bring this program back into the dock and end it for today. It has been a fabulous day with Richard Canis. Colonel, retired U.S. Army, logistics, Chuck Wright, my co-host, my guy who helped me found this, helicopter pilot. Um, I'm going to get you some really cool crayons for Christmas.
I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm disappointed. I have not gotten crayons for Christmas yet or for my birthday that you missed. <laughs> but that's okay. You know, as long as you caught Diane's. Diane's, the joke here is Diane's birthday is the day before mine. Uh, and she even forgets my birthday, but I never forget hers. <laughs> so, hey, we've got just enough time for Richard to answer that question. What that's would you a great say? question. What, what would, would you, you say? say to a young man or woman who's in high school or in college about go start your life in the military? What would you say to them, Rich? Well, you know, it's basically what I tell them, you know, all the time is that it gives you the ability uh, to learn, you know, a skill set that you don't currently have. And that skill set, although sounds simple, is part of a team effort. So it's show up on time, do your job, don't bitch, and you're going to be light years ahead of your peers in life because you will learn life lessons. And at the same time, they're going to pay you to learn a skill, learn a you know, an op, you know, whatever. If you want to, like I said, you want to be a cybersecurity person, guess who? Oh. Ask cybersecurity people. And they'll pay you, and you'll get licensed for all the things. So at some point when you do step out of the military, you're going to be snatched up by the population around you, you know, for huge money, you know. So, but that's, it all requires you to raise your right hand and say, I'm in. And that's, that's what's, is, you know, that's what I normally talk to the young men or women about is, are you in or out? Let's go. I it's had, fun. I had last week, I had Dr. Stephen Holt, who is the medical director for the state of Texas for the VA healthcare system. And basically he got his education thanks to the Air Force. <laughs> and <clears throat> medical school, I know so many doctors who actually went through the medical school thanks to the Navy or thanks to the Air Force or thanks to the Army. And it's amazing. You can get this tremendous education with more experience than if you went the civilian route. If you want to be in the <clears throat> medical profession, wow. And in Army, all of their training for medical is down at uh, Fort Sam in San Antonio. Well, I'll give you a perfect example. I'm at my... Uh, Hall of Fame induction ceremony, and they have three cadets sitting at my table. Uh, and you know, I asked one of them, a young lady who's a junior, so what's your plan? She says, I'm, I'm going to become a dentist. I said, Does the army know that yet? He said, Well, you know, I'm talking to him. I said, Well, before you leave, let me introduce you to one of my buddies from 1976 who is now the you know, dean of the dental school for the <laughs> University of Tennessee in Memphis, Amen. retired Navy captain, <laughs> and we put him together, and his response was, you need to talk to me now. <laughs> so um, it's all about connections, and, and it's all about teamwork. And opportunities. You know, and there's great, and opportunities. great, great opportunities. Also, I want to go say go to ourcommunitysalutes.org, and we want you to donate and help because this is so important to honor these young men and women. Also, Reads Across America. Our Community Salutes is involved with Reads Across America as well. And Chuck, yeah, outstanding. And DFWreads.com, two W's in there. And this is both of these programs. Our nationwide programs. Well, guys, I like to wrap it up with a prayer, so please bear with me. Dear Lord God, we thank you for putting the hedge of protection around our military and keeping them safe throughout the world and wherever they are and wherever they go. And our first responders, well, here taking care of us, God, we thank you for all you do for them. And we thank you for our veterans who continue the mission, Charlie Mike, in our communities, helping to build our communities with leadership. Thank you so much. Dear God, in your name we pray, amen. Richard, thank you so much for being on board. <laughs> Incredible discussion. And again, go to ourcommunitysuits.org or the Association of the United States Army. Join Richard and join up. Be a part of things that are so great for veterans. Chuck? We're talking about a couple of easy lifts here. Jim, thanks uh, for this. 
Uh, another great week, another great show. Richard, you are always awesome. Uh, I have really <laughs> enjoyed getting to know you better over the years, and I've known Richard for quite a while. His service is awesome. <laughs> Guys, this is the Veterans Impact Show. Thank you for being on board. All right, another successful event. Absolutely. You you yeah. <laughs> he didn't hit that one quite perfect. We've still got a couple. Oh, there we go. Now we're officially out.